Hi everyone, this is Cherry Enchantress with Pixie Dust Tarot, and this is your daily dust for January 3rd, Tuesday, January 3rd, right? If you're watching in real time, but it can also be for whenever you stumble upon it. We're in 2023 now, so <laughs> let's see what we got. I'm going to use the Gregory Scott Tarot just because it's, it's a really nice deck. I really like his deck, and... The artwork's really nice, and, and the interpretation, the booklet's kind of interesting. A little bit different take here and there, and I love Gregory Scott. He's quite an inspiration for me. You guys check out his daily readings as well, if you don't already. <laughs> All right, let's see. So let me give it a good shuffle. It was because of Gregory Scott that made me think, oh, you know what? I should do something like that if I can keep up with it. And I feel very proud of myself that I have for since, I don't know, when did I start? Like May or June? Maybe earlier than that last year. All right, let's go ahead and take off the top. Ooh, King of Swords. Nice. This is book smarts for sure. Intelligent. This dude's got a um, tattoo. Oh my gosh, that's interesting. <laughs> All right, nice, nice. And then we have the Three of Swords. Oh yes, he could be a heartbreaker. This could be you or somebody else. <sighs> All right, and what else? Here we have the Ten of Wands. Okay, let's zoom on in and I will let you know what I get from this. This is one of my favorite Ten of Wands images and interpretations because it's kind of one that I lean towards a lot. Like it's a duty and a pleasure. In fact, in my Sentimental Silhouettes Oracle, I have a card kind of like this where the there's a man holding a child and it's about responsibility, but it's a combination of, yeah, this is a responsibility, but it's a responsibility that I love. I enjoy it, you know? And so generally Ten of Wands has to do with duty and it has to do um, with sometimes burdens. Sometimes it's it's chores and work and all the stuff that you carry sometimes it's something that you can put down and sometimes it's it's workload that you can share sometimes it's a little bit of a martyr syndrome like only I can do this but sometimes it's the truth only you can do this you know like only you can be a real mom or dad to your kids even though you do get help sometimes from babysitters and other people grandparents and stuff like that but there's only you know your kids only have you know, or, and if, if your kids are, you know, if you are a step parent or if you're just a guardian, it's like, that's your duty, right? Um, and same with, with your connection with, um, animals and even your plants and gardens and things like that, things that you take care of. But, um, uh, the other thing I see in this, in this particular card is like that final push, you're going uphill, um, you're about to achieve something and, and you're almost there. You've only made, al almost made it. It's like the final push, like, like in labor, you know, <laughs> I see that a lot. So the, in my deck I created, um, it, I, I represented sort of a carrying, uh, actually I think it came out yesterday, right? The 10 of wands. And in my interpretation, it's more about the masculine coming in and carrying the feminine, um, in the twin flame journey. And so I, if we're if we're carrying over that twin flame theme, then I'm getting what I'm getting is there could be responsible responsibilities that get in the way of the three D connection. It's a joyful burden though. So not all things that bring joy are light and easy and not all things that are burdensome are lifeless and ugly. The effort is part of the happiness as much as happiness is part of the drive that is needed for success. <laughs> I love like some of the authors for Los Garbeo have a, like the one who writes, I think it must be the same person who writes the um, tarot sexual magic because I love their like little flip-flop and you know it's like you can see it this way and then flip it and see it this way as well so it's both a burden and a joy you know you can have both so i i definitely feel 
parental energy in this image. So let's go back to the beginning. The King of Swords is intelligent and strong-willed. He's 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 also known for like being defensive and on guard like you shall not pass. This king though has a sword on the the ground, so he seems a little more welcoming and his face is not as harsh, although he does have that little furrow in his brow like he's he has he's lived a little, you know, he's got his his concerns and he's got a little etching on his face. <laughs> he's got tattoos and it's like that kind of to me represents some things that things that have been with him a while, you know, that he's carried on a while. In this deck, this the King of Swords represent writing and intellectual maturity. And it's funny because it says laws are a burden. So that could be oh wow, laws are a burden. It's not just that you're that you may be a parent or your person may be a parent and cares and loves their kids, but there is some kind of like unspoken, you know, there's, there's like the vows, like when you get married and you make a promise to your spouse that you will love until death do you part and, and take care of them. Um, there's also like, you don't speak any particular vows to or about your kids, but it's inherent, you know, it's like a law. So, and, and some of these laws can be limiting on the 3D plane, right? But, um, but they do help regulate our morals because there's, there's a lot of people who just are good-natured people who follow the, their own moral ethics, you know, the way of being honorable, but not everybody's that way. So laws are in place to, to help guide people to stay in the moral ground. And that's a, I think it's a really good three-dimensional system and framework and construct. I think it is a, something that we should be grateful and that we have in place. But at the same time, I think we should also acknowledge there are also universal laws that, you know, spiritual laws that sometimes go way above, above and beyond the physical plane. But those laws too, I think, are should be based on um, fairness, love, equality, wholeness, truth, justice. Um, you know, the it, it's it's still the universal law. It is about light too, and it's about do no, do no harm. You know, it's about it's about that higher energy. So. Um, so yeah, <laughs> this could be somebody, you know, like on this particular day, there could be somebody that's just saying, sorry, this is the rules. That's what we have to live by. And it just breaks your heart or the other way around. This could be a legal matter. It could be lots of things. Um, it could be, it could be a ruling for some people out there. Like, um, when it comes to, um, when it comes to, custody of your kids like there could be like um, a, some kind of ruling coming in either for you or your person or something like that having to do with full or partial custody or something like that that could be a difficult thing to to take um, there could be maybe third party issues you know like this there 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 could be somebody here that's saying to somebody else <laughs> all right well as much as I'd like to engage in this connection with you, I have my duties and responsibilities and I just can't because of my kids or because of uh, some family member or some other responsibilities, which this person, wh whoever it is, however you relate to this reading, feels bad about, you know, it's like they're leaving and I can't do anything about it, you know, I, I'm, I have to face I have to accept its acceptance, you know, of this situation. There, there's this is this the energy of uh, suffering, but suffering is a choice, right? A lot of the swords, almost all of the the suit of swords, is um, perception and how you make what you make of a situation. So whenever you're triggered or grieving or angry or whatever, do a little split, you know 
um, elevate yourself and look at yourself and in, in, in your ego self so your higher self looks at your ego self and then just kind of ask yourself you know why am I upset in this situation you know it it seems like for most of us it's so well, that's just obvious you know you're just you go with emotion without actually using any mental energy or any spiritual energy to understand the situation so instead of just being pure fire, use a little bit of cups and swords <laughs> to, to, or if it, instead of pure cups, use a little, um, a little bit of little bit of swords. But mostly, like this is more more of a what the need here is is a major arcana energy, like a, a you know high high minded energy, a higher self, like an empress energy or or emperor or the high priestess or somebody or even the, the the hermit to give it some contemplation from your higher self so you know pain is going to happen it's it's obvious there's there is uh the grieving will happen and let it run its course don't stop that if you've grieving just grieve you know you don't need to stop grieving because because it's too low-minded no of course not you you grieve as long as you need to grieve but then there's a, going to be a period of healing afterwards so basically sometimes it comes this pain this grief comes from outside events when you don't have any control over it and he but healing though is in under your control and it starts from the inside and then it'll grow out and things will just get better so don't take it too hard i feel like the future is really bright the only the moment is is difficult or something that that may hurt but the future i feel like it opens up like room for even better things to come okay even better things to come so i hope you like that be just and pixie dust Thank you.